Hey, Diana J. Brody here from NLE Academy, and today we're going to go over the three most important questions that every assistant editor should ask on day one of their edit. This is the Premiere Edition for Premiere Pro users. So what every AE should ask day one. Before we get into it really quickly, just want to remind you to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you find this content helpful, and listen, if you have a question that you ask on day one of your edit that I'm not covering here, leave it for me in the comments. I want to know what are you guys asking day one of your edit, but let's jump into it. The first two I think are pretty standard. The third one was the one that was the biggest surprise for me. We're finding out that a lot of assistant editors don't even think about this for number three. We're going to get to that in a second, but let's start with the most obvious ones, right? Day one of your edit, let's go. You're going to ask first this question. What is the delivery spec of the project? Is it 1920 by 1080? Is it in 4K? What are you delivering in? This will make a massive difference. You need to know. You want to set the project up in the delivery spec. Don't match your project to the footage specs, right? So if I shoot in 4K, but my delivery spec is it 1920 by 1080, just your typical HD, which is usually what your delivery spec is going to be, probably 7.9 times out of 10. That way, if it's in 4K, I can punch in on it and take advantage of all the goodness that the 4K footage has to offer because my timeline will be 1920 by 1080 instead of 4K. Now I can punch all the way in really far, far farther than you could normally because I've got all that extra information to play with because my sequence is in a smaller format. Here's what I don't want you to do on day one. This is really, really important. Do not take a clip and come down here to that little page icon and make a sequence that way. No, 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 no. You do not want to do that. I'm going to undo that. You want to actually make the sequence. Go up to File, to New, create a new sequence, and make that sequence be in all the specs you need that sequence to be in. Do not do that. Don't. Because then, if this is 4K, and I make a sequence just by dropping it here to make the sequence, now I have made a sequence that's 4K. Now I can't take advantage of any of that extra information. I can't push in really far, not the way I could if my sequence was set up in the delivery spec of 1920 by 1080, right? So you want to set up your sequence. Then, once you've got your sequence set, right, you can make a template. Here's my template. And now, once you've done it once and you've set up all the delivery specs properly, then you could just come back to your template and go Command D and then rename your template and say, you know, uh, most uh, important, important video ever, right? And then I would change the label to green because for me, green is go. That's my active sequence. My active sequence is always going to be green. I've got red for my sequence template so that I can tell them apart. I don't want any confusion when it comes time to export. We want to know what I'm working on. So that is number one. Number two is, uh, is about proxies, right? So number two, are we making proxies? This is number two now. Are we making proxies for our clips? in Premiere, or are you making the proxies outside of Premiere? Let's say you make them in Resolve, right? And then you bring the proxies in from Resolve. Uh, so that's one workflow. I am always happy when I get to make the proxies right here in Premiere because it couldn't be easier. So once you get, once you know whether you're going to make proxies from uh, in Premiere, then you're going to ask them, 
what are the proxy settings? So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go to proxy, I'm gonna say create proxy, then you wanna know what are your proxy settings? What are you gonna use? They may already have a preset. You can click right here and choose the preset, but you're gonna wanna ask them. For me, uh, and you're gonna want to ask them, what, where are they going? What's the location? Next to the original media in the proxy folder, that's what I like, that's where I like to put mine. But their workflow may be different. They may be, they may have a drive that's just the proxy drive, and all your proxies are gonna go to that drive. You have to ask them. Ask them all the questions about proxies day one, super important. For me, I like to burn in on my proxy. So it says proxy, it's got the time code of the clip so that you can see that super easy. And I do my proxies in ProRes LT. That's what I do for my proxies. You do you. Actually, don't do you. You do what your company wants you to do. That's why you're asking these questions. So that is, those are the first two questions. And you would think that they'd be obvious, but you have no idea how many assistant editors don't think to ask them, or more importantly, are afraid to ask them because they think it makes them look weak and it doesn't. It makes you look smart. These are smart questions that you wanna ask that are gonna make you look good like you're on the ball. So before we get to the third question, really quickly, I just wanna let you guys know that if you are an assistant editor and you have been yo-yoing between assistant editor and junior editor, or maybe you're just pigeonholed as an assistant editor and you're dying to cut some content, I've got a free training that's gonna help you enormously. Hit that link in the description. It will take you to the free training. You're gonna wanna watch this. Super, super important. It's gonna help you and, uh, and it's also going to give you information to uh, work with me. I have a mentorship program. If you want to work with me and I can get you into that edit chair full time and give you everything, all the skills that you're going to need to really, really do it right and get your dream career, hit that link in the description and grab that free training. But now, here is the most important one. Let's do it. This is number three. We are going to talk about organization super quickly. It's important. I am very, very surprised at how many editors and assistant editors don't ask this on day one. This is good for if you're an editor, not just assistant editor, you're going to want to know all of these points. Let's roll them down. Organization, how should your sequence be set up? How should your sequence be set up? Oh my God, it's so important. It's so important. And people don't even think to ask it, right? Here's some questions. How many tracks do you want in the sequence? How many tracks will there be, will, will be used, right? Uh, every editor's different. Some editors are gonna have more than others, but you're gonna wanna set up the sequence with, at the very least, the minimal amount of tracks that they're gonna need. Is there VO? How much music is gonna be used? Are there interviews? Are the interviews on one or two microphones? So you're gonna need an extra channel. Will there be nat sound? Will there be ambient, naturally occurring sound? You're gonna to wanna to leave some audio channels for that. Are you going to need a textless, a textless version to send to wherever this is going? The streamer, the network, wherever your project is going, do you need a textless version? In which case, you're gonna to wanna to set it up so that everything containing text is, let's say, on channel V4 and above, video four and above. That way, it makes it easy to just get rid of all the text and uh, so that it can be localized somewhere else. You're gonna wanna know, this is all information you're gonna wanna know day one, and not for nothing, if you're an editor, you wanna know this information too. Where are we mapping our audio? Are the interviews on one and two? Is the VO on one and the interviews on one and two? There's not a lot of VO going on anymore. 
uh, in television, but you never know. If you're doing like a nature documentary, there's likely going to be some VO. So you're going to want to ask, where is that? Is that on V1 here in the United States? Nine times out of 10, my VO goes on A1, the A1 track. But I have a friend uh, who lives in New Zealand and down there, they put the uh, their VO on the bottom most audio track because it's just gonna be scratch until the end. So they're, they're like, nope, we want it all the way on the bottom and we want the video for the interviews to be V1 and then A1, A2 so that it's all together. That's how they do theirs. They think it's crazy that we put ours on A1, but you know, they're in the Southern hemisphere. So the toilet spins that way. And so their VO goes on the bottom. That's my, that's my explanation. I'm sticking with that. Uh, what audio is getting mapped to what channels? What video is getting mapped to what channels? Are they going to want you to flatten your video before it gets kicked out? That's for an AE to know. AEs need to know if that's going to be flattened. As an editor, I flatten my tracks before I send it to the AEs because y'all are busy and I don't want to waste your time. So let's get that. So I'll flatten mine. I'll bring my B-roll down to V1. I'll get all my tracks as, as compact as possible all the way at the end if I haven't been editing like that to begin with, which normally I do. But if I don't, then I'm going to make sure to flatten the tracks. But you're going to need to know if you need to flatten those tracks when you kick it out. So you're going to need to ask that on day one so you can keep that in mind. So you know how much work you're going to have when it's time to export. Uh, and what's the naming convention for the sequences, right? What is your, how is your sequence going to be named? Over here, I have most important video ever, but let's say they want it to be most important video ever underscore uh, V version one underscore and then today's date, right? So today that I'm shooting that, that I'm shooting this video, it would be uh, the 9th of September or I'm sorry, the 14th of September, 2024. And so maybe that's how they want it done, right? most important video ever version one with the date you need to ask this because when you set up the sequence for the editor you're going to set it up with the proper naming convention and not for nothing if we click over here to the clips we're going to want to know what's the naming convention for the clips right all of this organization all of this organization is absolutely crucial an uh, an ounce of prevention beats a pound of cure you want to set things up as correctly as possible the first time around so that everything goes smoothly in the rest of the entire uh the entire project so things are gonna go smoothly and look, other things that you can do, not only can you make a template sequence where once you've got the sequence settings right, you're, you're doing that, you can make a template project. You could have a project with all the stuff you need, with all the settings you need, with everything proper. Set that up, duplicate that folder, rename that folder, duplicate that project, rename that project. Make the machines work for you get things so you can work as fast as possible and as efficiently as possible and get everything done and that will leave you more time to play if you've got some time you can always reach out to an editor and say hey do you have any little sequences you'd like me to put together is there some a roll that i can put together for you to take that off your plate if you're done your work you have the time to ask your editor that and look if you're looking for advice on your specific career, your specific gig as an AE, and how you can move up and get in the edit chair, or how you can just streamline and do your job better and book better gigs, you can hop on my calendar. I am opening up my calendar for a very brief time in the description. Check it out. Hit that link in the description and you could get a 20 minute free career consult with me. Let me help you. 
Let me help you in your gig as an AE. Let me help you get to where you want in your career. Let me help you. Things are more difficult now. There's a lot less learning from editors that AEs do than it was back in my day in the late 1900s. So let me help you. Hop on my calendar. That'll be in the description below as well as the link to the free training. Don't forget that. Don't forget to hit that like button if this has helped you at all. Don't forget to leave me a comment and tell me what are the questions you're asking on day one. And I will see you in the next video.